This is Miss Cherie from the Culinary Kids. And we would like to ask you a couple questions. Sure, sure. We did our class today, right? And afterwards, we have a few things to chat about. Let's see what you got for me. What do you like most about working with children and food? Ooh, children like to eat, right? It's <laughs> easy, isn't it? And it inspires kids to think of different things, to get healthier, to make good, healthy choices. But the best part is, when they try something new, they like to get in charge. They take it home to their parents, and they teach their parents a thing or two, and that brings the parents and the kids together, which is the most important thing. What do you hope children and teens will be able to take away from these classes? Oh, um, well, a little bit of that, a little bit of coming together, connecting with their families, but also to try something new. We did a lot of trying new flavors, new foods, um, stepping outside of the standard foods that kids like to eat. And so I hope they'll get inspired and want to do more of it at home and possibly order something more than chicken nuggets and macaroni and cheese next time they go out to eat with mom and dad. How long have you been working for Culinary Kids? Culinary Kids has been open for three years now, and I've been there the entire time. I actually opened it myself um, several years ago, and uh, we're looking at many, many more years to come. So it's moving good. What did you do before um, Culinary Kids? Before Culinary Kids, I actually had been teaching, um, not in the teaching system specifically, but doing nonprofit work and education work. I worked for the San Diego Zoo in Wild Animal Park there. I did a lot of work with kids uh, programming there. Then I went on to open up Boys and Girls Clubs in a couple of different cities. And even from that, went to work with the YMCA. Uh, my husband was military, so we traveled a lot. And each time we traveled, I did a little bit more work with kids in the community there. So, been doing it for quite a while. I'm very happy to be home and able to do it here in my community now. Who are your heroes? Oh, man. There's so many. When you think about heroes, you think about famous people, right? But the truth of the matter is, to me, my heroes are much more personal. My her one of my heroes is my grandmother. My grandmother would, keep, would cook our um, traditional holiday meals with us every year, and that became a tradition in our family where she would come together and use her recipes. When she did that, we would be spending time together. And my grandmother insisted that you must wash the rice over and over and over again. I now know that when you make red beans and rice, you don't really have to wash the rice. What I think she was doing, though, was hanging out spending time with me as we washed the rice over and over. We talked and we spent time together. So people who spend time together with you as you're growing up, those are my heroes. Those are my heroes. What are some of your hobbies? Oh man, I love all kinds of stuff. Um, my, the one that I love the most and haven't been able to do as much that opened it up recently though is gardening. I love, love, love to take my children, I have four little boys at home, along the, the path of starting a garden, growing some foods, watching the changes that we're in charge of, taking care of and nurturing something, and then harvesting and enjoying the fruits of the labor. It's a full service scenario. The kids get to be a part of all parts of it from the beginning to the end. They watch their influence kind of take shape, and then everybody enjoys it together at the end. So that's one of them. And then art on the other side. But that kind of combines them both. Listen to me now. I'm talking about growing food and art. Now cooking is both of those, right? So I guess it puts it all together. It makes sense to me now. <laughs> Thank you for coming today. You are so welcome, my friend. Excellent job. Bon appetit. <laughs> This is Ms. Jen Schumacher Waller. She just did an art event here at Slide Up Branch Library. During the summer, you come and do art programs at the library. What do you do during the school year? So during the school year, I teach art at the International School of Louisiana. And I teach kindergarten, first grade, the lower school. And then I teach also middle school art. So I teach um, ceramics to them and printmaking. Those are their special classes for the middle school. Cool. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about art? Well, I think there's um, a lot of beauty in art. I love making and putting things together and exploring what can happen when you use materials. And I think um, questioning and finding some uncertainty, I think that's what's really fun about art. There's really no correct or right answer. It's kind of personal, and then people can also receive something by looking at what you make. 
Okay, and last question though. Since our theme this year is superheroes, what is your favorite superhero? Oh, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, yes. I need some armbands. Lasso. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for thank having you. me. Uh, You're thank a good you interviewer. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Hello, I'm Daniel, and this is an interview with Frank Levy here at the Slido Branch. Today he was doing Stories in Motion. He was doing a little bit of Riding Hood. Yep! <laughs> was that a question? I'm ready to answer it. Yes! Little Red Riding Hood. She's little, she's red, she rides. Yes. <laughs> she doesn't really ride, she walks. But she, you know, she knows people who ride. That's good. What do you like most about working with children? With children, especially when you do interactive theater, which is you pull them out of the audience and then you make the show right on the spot, you can see growth, improvement, change right away. You can see during the run of the show, you can see that they get better. And I don't mean that they get better in becoming like great actors, like you and me. I mean, they get, they get better at the two things the world needs the most, which is communication and cooperation. Needs that the most and has that the least. And so kids in these shows learn to communicate better, they learn to cooperate better, and you see it happen in the show. By the end of the show, they're all really working well together, and it only takes 45 minutes. I think if you have good hair, you can just do anything. How did you become a children's performer? Hmm. When I was five years old, I had uh, five little brothers and sisters. And I would direct my brothers and sisters in shows that I called The Magnificent Show. I just made it up. But that's what I was doing when I was a little kid. Then that went out of my mind, but I think it was in me from, that, from then on. And I grew up and I became a teacher. And I taught for more than 20 years, but I taught how to perform. And one day I said, I'm gonna go back to doing it in a bigger room than the classroom. And I took retirement from St. Tammany Parish where I loved teaching. And some people loved me, I think four. And then I left teaching and I went into performing. And I do shows now, that was 20 years ago, and I do shows all over the United States. I've had seven tours of Canada and eight tours of Australia. So I get to go all over the world doing good for children. Also, uh, just this is the thing I'm proud of, and if it proves to be an example for somebody, I want to put it in this interview. I have training, medical training, in working with large groups who have post-traumatic stress. And the Red Cross uses my shows in shelters after disasters. I was here in Slidell at um, North Shore High School. I was in Pearl River at the junior high school. Those were shelters. And that center, the Harbor Center, was also a shelter. And I did programs for the Red Cross after all these disasters. They've used me 35 times since Katrina. So sometimes theater can promote healing, too. So my greatest moments are when children do better and when I can promote healing in people who are really in distress. And I got started doing it that way as a teacher. Wow. It's wow. I'm, I'm blessed. I'm a very lucky man. I hope I can grow up and beat you. I would like to grow up too, but it looks like it's not going to happen. My wife, who's a librarian, uh, makes all the costumes. She makes about 200 costumes a year for all these shows that I do. The show that I did today, and it will do again today, Little Red Riding Hood, is one of 53 shows that I have. So if you want a show from me, and I do the show, and you say, oh, that was a good show. We would like you again next week, but don't do the same show. I'm your guy, because i got lots of shows. Over the years, I just keep adding and adding whatever people need. So that's what we've done. Come on, ask me a hard one. Ask me a hard one. Who are your heroes? My heroes. My heroes are anybody who serves in the military. My heroes are people who work for hospice, who give their time to hospice. And my heroes are the people I see every time I check in with the Red Cross. And I get to see the great work that they do 95% of them do it for free, volunteers. I'm a volunteer. We do it for free to do good for others. Those are my heroes. People I would name as my heroes, I think all of the Holocaust survivors are great heroes. And I'm sorry that the world is such a place where people do mean things 
to each other. So I think my greatest heroes are people who promote learning and peace rather than violence in the world. Those are, those are the true heroes, the people who don't have to do violent stuff to be a hero. They just be good, lead by example. That's the best. Like doing this podcast, this is good. You're doing a good deed. Doesn't mean I'm going to give you money, <laughs> but I will, think, I will think good thoughts about you. Thank Come on, ask me another. What is your favorite thing about performing? My favorite thing about performing, besides what I said about working with the kids and with the Red Cross, is I like to travel and I like to go to really amazing places. So I've been to Rome and I've been to London and I've been to Sydney, Australia, and I've been to Abita Springs. I've been to some pretty, Pearl River, some amazing places way out there. Way out, well Pearl River's, well anyway, yeah. So I like to travel and go to amazing places. And sometimes my wife goes with me and that's great too. She has a job, she can't always. You know. um, what do you hope people will learn from your production? I hope they will learn communication. I hope they will learn cooperation. I hope they will learn whatever the story I do is, that story will have some message in it. Now with Little Red Riding Hood, the message is to be brave and learn to take care of yourself because when Little Red tries to get help in the story, everybody lets her down. So Little Red says, okay, I guess I'm gonna have to do it myself. And she and her old grandma end up beating the wolf themselves. So teaching them self-reliance, but that's this story. Every story, you know, like the theme this year says, every story deserves a hero. Well, every hero teaches a lesson, too, and that's what these stories do. That's what's so great about the library. Who is your favorite superhero? My favorite superhero? When I was little, I think it would have been Superman. But now, I think I'm ready to like Ant-Man. I know he's not here, he hasn't come out for a couple more days yet, but my wife already likes Ant-Man the best. She's never even seen Ant-Man. So I'm going to agree with my wife and say, unseen, I like Ant-Man the best. And then maybe, no, I'm not going to say, but Ant-Man the best, yes. Thank you for coming today. Another bump, blow it up, rain and debris falls at the clouds, cause thunder, lightning. <laughs> Thank you for doing the podcast. We're out of here. All right. Hi, I'm Daniel. And I'm Levi. And I'm Raihan with Didgeridoo Down Under. And this is Joey B. Jelly bean. Jelly bean. What kind of animal is jelly bean? Jelly bean is a is an Australian blue tongue skink lizard. And he's got a pretty amazing blue tongue and he likes to stick out of his mouth all the time. Where are you from? I am originally from St. Paul, Minnesota. Now I live in St. Petersburg, Florida. So from cold to the south. Exactly. Is it better down here? I love it. I love it down in the south. I love it in the tropical climate. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love palm Humidity. trees and the ocean. How long did it take you to learn how to play the didgeridoo? Um, I started learning in 2005. That's when I first started learning how to play didgeridoo. And I was able to make the sound just kind of like, like you guys did today, be able to make a little bit of the, the droning sound at first. But it took me probably about three or four months before mm -hmm. I could circular breathe and um, really be able to play and sustain a note on the didgeridoo. So okay. I'd say about three or four months, you know, to be able to make a solid note. But then, you know, after that, I just continually got better and better. I still learn new things. Mm -hmm. I still practice and watch videos on YouTube and watch other people do That's cool things. That's what I do on a daily basis. That's awesome. Uh, what is Aussie funk? Aussie funk. Well, funk is, you know, getting down and funky. And so Aussie is getting down and funky with a didgeridoo. Down under. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How did I become a performer? So my friend, Darren, started this uh, program, Didgeridoo Down Under. And um, he knew that I was a didgeridoo player, and he was looking for a new person to, to do this program with him. And so he asked me one day, he said, hey, would you like to do this show? And I thought, sure, I'll try it, why not? I was a teacher, and I had my summers off, so I, it would be a perfect opportunity for me to travel. And so I, I tried it, that was the first time I did it was 2008, and I've been doing it ever since. Yeah. And I love it, love it. 
It was so much fun. Mm. Who are your heroes? Wow. Who are my heroes? I have a lot of heroes. Um, first people that come to my mind are definitely Martin Luther King, um, Gandhi, Malcolm X, Harriet Tubman. Um, I mean, there are so many heroes. Mm-hmm. People, basically the people that, that um, I look up to are the people that are trying to and have tried to make our world a better place and have done so, you know, being true to themselves and sometimes mm-hmm. going against what everyone else wanted them to do and, and just knowing themselves and standing firm in that belief and working hard towards that. Mm-hmm. So, What do you hope children and teens will be able to take away from these events? So, you know, you notice that during the uh, program I gave you lots of little life lessons and things like that in there, right? Mm-hmm. And so those are the re- really the important things, you know? And so I was teaching about didgeridoos, but really I was teaching you um, about perseverance, about sticking to something, about um, even though you try something and you're not great at it right away, mm-hmm. that rather than just giving up, you, you if you want to do it, you work towards it and you keep striving for it and you'll get it, you know. So those those kind of lessons are the, the important thing. So the didgeridoo is really just a vehicle for me to, to teach life lessons to kids. Also be a goofball. And also, also be a goofball, which is also a life lesson mm-hmm. because you should definitely be a goofball. You'll be a lot happier. Yeah. As long as you show kindness and respect and care for others. Mm-hmm. Since our um, theme this year is um, superheroes, Wes, who is your favorite superhero? I did not expect that question. It oh. might be Captain America. It's obviously Jellybean. Jellybean? Jellybean. That's my superhero. Jellybean, Jellybean is a seriously awesome superhero. But um, I, I really think, you know, because I really, really love that new... Avengers movie. Did you guys see that? Yeah. Age, Age of, of Ultron. Ultron. That was really awesome. And and I love the, the newer Captain America movie that came out, the uh, Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. And um, um, I yeah. Like spoilers. I love I love Captain America because um, he has such high integrity. Do you guys know what integrity means? Mm-hmm. So he always he wants to, to do the right thing. And, and even if it's totally not popular with everybody else, and even if it's not convenient, he's gonna do the right thing. I really admire that about, mm-hmm. about Captain America. Plus, he's just super awesome. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks nice for having me. Mm-hmm. It's really nice to hang out with you guys. You guys are a really great crew of kids. Why, thank you.